Everybody, it's Zach here. Just wanted to go through another Mindset Monday. Today's June 15th, 2020. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about empathy lately, and I was watching a video that Brene Brown put out about empathy. It's a two and a half minute video or so. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, but in the video, she talks about empathy being a fuel for connection, that empathy fuels connection while sympathy drives disconnection. And she talks about the etymology of the word, kind of the origin of the word empathy. And she says that, uh, interestingly, it comes from the Greek <clears throat> origin of the words en, meaning in, and pathos, which means feelings. So really, literally, the, the, the word means in feeling or feeling with others. Uh, she also talks about a nursing school scholar named, or a, a nursing scholar named Teresa Wiseman, who came up with uh, what she calls the four qualities of empathy. One is perspective taking, that's the first, which is the ability to take a perspective of another person and realizing that perspective is their truth. Uh, the other one is staying out of judgment. Sometimes easier said than done. Uh, the third is recognizing emotion in other people. And then number four would be communicating that recognition of, uh, of their emotions. Uh, at the end of the day, empathy is, is vulnerable, right? It's, it means being vulnerable in order to connect with somebody else uh, who's struggling with something. I have to connect with myself inside, you have to connect with yourself inside in order to communicate with that person. Uh, one thing that was uh, a good point is she says, rarely does empathy begin with the words, at least, right? Uh, well, at least, dot, 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 your house didn't uh, didn't get hit by the tornado, even though we haven't sold it yet, at least, you know, dot, 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 right? <clears throat> that, uh, for obvious reasons, doesn't help. Although it's a common response that we sometimes uh, can go to without thinking. I, I just finished a book called Crucial Conversations, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I'd recommend it. And uh, it, there were some, so a few good takeaways that I wanted to talk about. One is, uh, well, first off, they define crucial conversations as any conversation where the stakes are high, where opinions vary, and where emotions can run strong, right? Which pretty much describes what we do for a living every single day. So, uh, but one of the things they talk about is the primary reason that it's hard to relate to somebody else's uh, that it's hard for, for most people to relate to somebody else during a crucial conversation is that they often don't recognize that the other person is in a state where they do not feel safe. And so the goal, the first goal of the book talks about uh, that, that, that really you, your job is to make it safe, right? And to, to do that, we have to understand what are the biggest fears, right? If we're talking to a client, what are their biggest fears? What is their worst case scenario that they're envisioning? Uh, we want to put daylight on that, right? Let them know that, 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 that we understand that, that we recognize that, and talk about it. And then try to separate fact from, from emotion. <clears throat> and, and I think as their, as their trusted real estate advisor, that's our job, right? That's what they're hiring us to do. Um, people often don't feel safe when their views aren't being heard. Uh, they don't feel safe when there's a lack of clarity or understanding. Uh, and they don't feel safe when they're just completely overcome by that worst case scenario that they believe is very real right? Uh, the book talks about two outcomes when people don't feel safe. They turn to either silence or violence. Silence being uh, you can mask things using sarcasm. Uh, clients might avoid, uh, avoid the situation. They might steer you away uh, or they might just withdraw, right? So in real estate terms, a lot of times people will say, yeah, I just, I need to think about it, right? When somebody, when you hear somebody say, I need to think about it, they probably don't feel safe or there's a lack of clarity uh, that they're dealing with. If they turn to violence, uh, that involves controlling, labeling, or attacking. This often comes in the form of an onslaught of all the things that maybe you have done wrong, right, to get them into this situation. Uh, one natural instinct with us, with anyone, uh, is that when we're faced with either of those, but especially with violence, we can react, right? Uh, when we react, we're usually using our emotions rather than our minds uh, in an effort to protect ourselves against all the things that they're projecting against us, right? Uh, unfortunately, we often do this without regard for the big picture, which is really achieving our goal, which should be the same as their goal, which is helping them get to a certain place in time by selling their house for a certain price point, right? Um, or helping them buy a house. Uh, but ultimately what this does is it, translate us, it translates into us not being the professional that they hired. So again, uh, Keeping it safe, ultimately, once you get there, the goal is to, what the book calls, uh, to identify uh, what the book calls a shared pool of meaning, which means inviting and encouraging others to share their ideas, uh, even if those differ from our own, right, to have an ultimately have a, a, a fruitful and in-depth conversation. 
People who are skilled at crucial conversations know that what they want out of the conversation from the beginning. They keep their cool. They continue to make it safe. They recognize when it's not safe, and they work toward shedding light and shining light on those uh, on those issues that are that are creating a lack of safety or lack of perceived safety. Uh, obviously, this takes practice and awareness. Uh, a friend told me once that uh, his definition of empathy was understanding someone else's map which ultimately is how their life experiences impact their decisions and their opinions and their emotions, right? So to effectively see those, he said, though, the tricky part is you have to first understand your own map, which takes a lot of deep work and a lot of practice, and, uh, but it's something that we can all work on uh, and get better at. Uh, but in crucial conversations, our actions are ultimately a result of our feelings, right? <clears throat> so we, we see and hear something, and then we have a feeling about that, and then we usually react, right? So if a client tells you, you know what, maybe you're presenting an offer, right? It's a lower offer and, and, and a client says, you know, I, I wish you would have followed up with those other showings before this offer came in, right? Think about that for a minute. I, I wish you would have followed up with those other showings before this offer came in. What is your reaction to that? A client's telling you that right now. What do we do, right? That leads, that leads to a feeling and sometimes it, it feels like an attack. Well, ho well hold on. <laughs> What do, you, what do you mean follow up? I, 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 I did follow up and you're, you're going through your head and trying to think about all the things that you did or didn't do. Um, but ultimately you're putting up your defenses and, and, and you're not feeling safe, right? What's cool is, is that, you know, you see or hear something and then you have a feeling and then you react. There's actually another step in the way that, uh, that, uh, that this book talks about, which was kind of a wake up call for me. And I thought it was really neat. Uh, the other step is that we tell ourselves a story, right? So we see something or hear something, we, we hear that statement, and then we tell ourselves a, a story just in a nanosecond about what the other person is saying. And usually it's in relation to something that we've had happen to us before or something that, uh, that we've felt before. Uh, so they were just asking us to follow up with showings. We may internalize that as telling us that we're not doing our jobs correctly and we, re we, we you know, react in an emotional way that ultimately is unproductive uh, and takes us out of the role of being the professional. But really, if you think about it, what they might be saying is, you know, gosh, we have this offer. It's, it's, it's lower than I'd want. I really wish I could have another choice just to make sure I'm not missing anything, right? Maybe that's their fear. Maybe that's what's making them feel not safe is they're thinking of the worst case scenario of, of, uh, of, of somebody else being out there, wanting the house, dreaming about the house, but just not being so close to making that offer, but not doing it yet. And they don't want to miss out on that, right? So that's a very real fear of a seller or even a buyer. Uh, just, you know, in the other way around. Um, so what's cool about the four part process is that uh, we can control those stories, right? So if we practice it enough, we can recognize those stories and they're based on our own maps and not our clients. And then we can change them, which ultimately then changes the feelings that we have that come out of them, which then ultimately changes our reaction, right? And keeps us as the professional and keeps us with our client uh, being in the driver's seat we control the process and help them make the decision. So if you heard a client say again, uh, I wish you would have followed up with those other showings before this offer came in. If you could quickly pause, tell yourself a story that their fear is really just missing the best opportunity. And then maybe you could respond with, you know what, you've got a good point. Hey, in order to ensure we don't miss any other opportunities, how about I call those agents one more time because I have followed up with them or maybe I've followed up with some of them, uh, but I'm gonna call them one more time and just let them know that we have an offer on the table just to be sure that they aren't planning on writing an offer before we accept that. If I did that and none of them expressed any interest, would you feel more comfortable moving forward with this offer at that point? Think about that difference. Listen to it. And I bet by shining light on that fear, you're giving them a pathway to be able to make a comfortable decision. You're adding clarity and understanding to whatever some of the unknowns were. And you're helping them get there. Because a lot of times our buyers or our sellers, our clients don't fully understand where that uh, emotion is coming from, but our job is again to be the professional to help them get there. So I challenge you to practice this week being self-aware, practice it with a client, a spouse, a friend, um, a sibling, a kid, <laughs> whatever it is. And remember the, the, those four steps are we, he, we see or hear something and then we tell ourselves a story and you got to control that piece. You got to recognize that that's happening. Stop. You're going to have a feeling immediately. You got to, you got to be conscious to stop that. And then tell yourself a story so that you can change that feeling and then act and respond appropriately. So hopefully that was helpful. I'll uh, link some of that stuff in the description and I uh, look forward to seeing you all tomorrow at the sales meeting.